Hello again, Case Loki back with another video for the colony. In our prior video, uh, it's always a little bit hard to get our view concentrate on stuff, we put this in place. It allowed us to get substrate, ore, metallic ore, and minerals, and also some water up on the base. And then also it allowed us to turn the asteroid into a storage for carbonite. Right now we have 62,000 carbonite for any flying stuff we need to do from the planet to up to here or back down. We can use that carbonite as uh, logistics fuel or after we do set up the rest of the base we can use it for uh, refining into liquid or, or liquid fuel, oxidizer, monopropellant, xenon gas, anything we really need. In this video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring another couple of fuel hatches up. I think another three should do, and we're going to put them on little barges that connect in and then have a docking port on the back end, but they're only going to have mono repellent. And also start bringing up, uh, we'll need to bring up, I don't know how many supplies, we'll need to bring up a thing for supplies and for some rocket parts and all that. So let's go ahead and start building that ship. So the first thing we're actually going to start with is the fuel hatches. So we're going to need this quad adapter. And this is most likely just going to be destroyed because we won't be needing it once we're actually there. Or... I don't know. It might not be needed. We're going to actually go ahead and put a decoupler on that because that's... Actually, I'm kind of confused on how to do this. What would be the best method? Oh, and I did install another mod to this, uh, Space Y, or, uh, yeah, Space Y, uh, I can't remember the rest of the name, but it added in, uh, that's not, no, that's not part of it. It added in a bunch of new solid rocker boosters. I've been talking about them in a bunch of videos where it's like, oh, I wish I freaking remembered to put that on, but I keep forgetting to do so, but now we do have them. Examples of them are these here. They'll allow it pretty much that, whoa, I have not actually seen that one before. The last one I knew that was the heaviest size was this one. They've added a bunch more now. Decent. So that means it's going to be a lot easier to get our heavy, heavyweight rockets up. So, since this is going to be an on-manned vehicle. We're just going to go ahead and grab that. And what we'll do is with this we're also going to bring Kerbals. Because we're getting to the point now where we're going to start habitat or putting people on the planet and all that. So we'll put that. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, we're going to want that. So what we'll do, actually, since this is going to be connected to the planet, what we can do is, find the part, we can put a fuel hatch on this one. So where's the fuel hatches? So we already have carbonite there. So we can use liquid fuel, oxidizer, xenon gas. We'll do this one xenon gas. So that's one of them done. I was going to do that this disconnects and then we do the docking port, but with this it's not going to actually work for that. So we have that uh, xenon gas port. So that will allow us to store xenon gas on this planet, or on this asteroid. So from that we'll then attach We're only going to want, uh, what well, we're going to want, actually we'll just do a regular docking port. Actually no, we'll do one of these. Because we're going to, just as soon as we get it all set up, we're just going to destroy the parts. So we don't have to really worry about, too much about, uh, 
issues with English. Come on. Uh, with issues of this part being here. So as soon as we destroy that with Bill, who's gonna... Yeah, we're gonna have Jeb and Bill on this. So Jeb can f doesn't even really need to be needed because we got that there. But then we have uh, Bill, who will be able to destroy this part, and then we can attach the Xenon right to the planet. And this is gonna turn into our supply ship. So now, what we want to do... Oh, we're not even going to need that many. We only need two. Got a clue out on that fact. And I don't know why I was putting those on first. But, no worries. So, we only need two now. Because we already have the carbonite there. And we have the xenon gas on this one. So now, with that, we only have to go ahead and put two tugs on here. Oh, they're the wrong way. And then we're going to give them... Um, those tanks. Now we just have to figure out what thruster blocks we want on. Like, these ones here might be the best bet. Ooh, no, those are way too strong. They're just going to throw the ship everywhere. And these are the ones that have the 45 degree angle. Not those, though. They only have 24% thrust. So what we'll do is we'll grab these ones. The reason I want to grab these ones is because if I do it the other way, then we're going to be having thrusters in the center there, which will cause a few issues. Not a lot of issues, but I don't want to have to worry about me getting there and then having everything explode on me. And then, since we got that, we're also going to put docking ports on this. So with these, I should change those now so I don't forget them. So, with these set up and connected, it will allow other ships to dock to this to refuel and then go to the... Uh, go and do their mission on Minimus or refuel to go from this asteroid to go home or a ship that I forgot to refuel with some of the required fuel that was created at the asteroid can refuel here. So that's that. those two uh, set up. And they can also be locations for future base installations to connect to. So we have this part now. We can build the rest of the ship. Uh, do I want that one? Now here's a bit of an issue. I don't know if I want... I'm going to need to throw at least 190, or I would prefer 2k, but I can't, it's hard to get that exact number. It will give them a good supply of supplies. <laughs> because before I threw two of these on, which gave them enough supplies for two people for four months. With this, it will give them almost ten times the amount, so they'll have enough for 40 months. And even if it gets to the point where they run out of food and all that, they are not that far away from Minimus and they'll just stop working in total. From there, we're going to want to go ahead and... Because right now we got everything we really need except for solar panels and some docking ports. We'll put those on the... Uh, actually... We're also going to need a storage for for uh, fertilizer, because fertilizer is something we're going to need uh, a fair bit of, because it's not a producible resource, which I really wish it was, like maybe a further end kind of thing, but I don't know if Rover Dude has actually any plans to do so, because it would, it would be nice to be able to do that, but... It is what it is. I don't believe we have a urinate, ur uranium, uranite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word right, but I don't think we have one of those yet, so we'll have this fertilizer on here. How much extra weight does that add? Not even that much, like 2,000. Shouldn't be too much problem. 
So that will supply us most likely enough fertilizer for like five or so kerbals for quite a long time. And then we have this room for uranium, uh, unrefined uranium, I'll just call it that for now, because I don't know how to pronounce that word, that will give us uh, just the required room to start refinery once we start bringing up uh, things we need, or not things we need, bring up the, not very good at English tonight. So just give me a brief moment, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, one of the cats was freaking out, and I wish I had software that was good uh, editing software to move those sections out, but I do not. And any software I use otherwise will destroy the aspect ratio on every video I do. If anyone has a software that they can recommend, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I'd love to find a good bit of software for it. But now we have this part of the ship set up. All that's left on this part that's needed is, actually, we have 160 electric charge, uh, yeah, we well, might as well throw a battery on here too, because in the long run, the more battery bank power I have stored, the better. There is an upper limit to that, but, eh, it shouldn't be too bad with just that one part. We want that, and we're going to go ahead and use the Poodle engine for this. This one has a little bit of extra weight, so that should be enough to get us into orbit and do a little bit of extra burning if, or be enough to get to Minimus and do a little bit of extra burning if need be. So now we just need to make the launch stage. And since we got space wide, it's actually going to be a lot easier because the one part, like I have all the boosters and all that stuff, but the one part I really wanted was these decouplers. They're just so awesome. They're large aerodynamic uh, radial decouplers that have their own solid rocket boosters inside them, allowing you to push heavy amounts away, which without them, it's quite a frustration in doing it. I'm going to actually go ahead and try out some of the new boosters too. So we need a lot more than that. Not enough. Oh, actually, this was the biggest one I remember. I was thinking on the last game I was playing where I didn't have uh, all the upgrades. Actually, let's go another stage up too. And we still want more. Shoot. Super heavy lift. Is that almost there? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to actually just go ahead and throw another layer of tanks on this. Almost there. So we need an orange tank. Ooh, and I should really check if these heavy, heavy rocket boosters have gimbals. They do! Decent. And I'm going to start uh, requiring that I actually try and save the stages, because of late I've not been doing that, which makes whole stage recovery a pointless mod I have running that's just taking up space. But if I can, I might be able to save these stages. Did Rocket X install any parachutes? I thought they did have a parachute group for that mod. I might be wrong though. Okay. 
Ooh, and there's something I would have screwed up if I did not just think of that. I forgot to put those on, which would have equaled out to me not being able to easily, or actually be able to detach these at all. I'd have to, what in the, I'd have to try and bash the ship into stuff to get those to blow up. That's done. Um, we're just going to go ahead and try with these. And then we're going to go ahead and throw two extras. So we have those set up. And then those decouplers. And this stage. This stage. And then we're going to want to... What are all these other ones? Oh, they're these ones. Okay. So, we have this all set up now to start bringing our supply stage to Minimus along with Uranite and that, and our two Kerbals. Ah, no, that, that amount of supply should be fine. We have a full thing of fertilizer, so we should have enough fertilizer Supplies and fertilizer. Like that amount of supplies would most likely at full mass last at least a year with enough kerbals, or about 10 kerbals in there. Which we're going to need quite a few kerbals to get this base fully in operational once we get everyone out there, or everything out there. We're just going to go ahead and let this thrust almost straight up because we're going to want at least a little bit of vertical or yeah vertical velocity where's it vertical no horizontal velocity i think that's it delta v vehicle no that's vessel orbit no horizontal velocity yeah because we're going to mostly get easily up in orbit. I should have actually lessened the thrust on these so they didn't burn out as quickly, but we're already at 90. Okay, yeah, I should have slowed them down a bit because this might equal out to this ship burning up. Surface. But yeah, you can see those have uh, solid rocket boosters on them and those uh, parachutes should activate once they're out in uh, out of the atmosphere and come back out of the planet but I highly assume at the speed we ended up leaving them at they're gonna be kinda burning up in orbit and I think I should have added more reaction or yeah more reaction wheel to this because I think I only have maybe about 50 but once this loops back around I should be fine if I do the kind of cheaty time warp glitch where it stops rotation there is a mod that makes it so that doesn't happen but eh, I prefer having that as a option because I usually end up with my planes flipping or space my ships flipping there we go. Just get myself into a good orbit in the direction I need to go. And since we went straight up so much, I'm just going to start thrusting at about 2,000. Because right now we have um 2,000 delta V in the stage. Yeah, 2,000 delta V. Oh, I completely missed what I was planning on doing. So yeah, 2,000 delta V. And I believe the Poodle does generate electric charge, so if we end up running out, we can also rely on that. There's actually a recent update with the program we use, uh, GeForce Extr Experience uh, Share, that caused me to have a bunch of issues with trying to stream, such as, or not stream, 
record with as soon as I press the hotkey to start recording it would drop this screen out causing me to uh, have like a couple of seconds of unwanted footage that is of my desktop even though it's not really big of an issue it's just aesthetically unpleasing for a video I prefer to start in start the video inside Kerbal Space Program not have all my footage start with oh you can see all the games I play which doesn't really matter all in all but I prefer it not to be sh not to revert to desktop each time I press it When I do get to the asteroid, I'm most likely, as soon as I attach all these parts to it, I'm going to fly around and delete all those extra parts. Because right now, there's probably about 50 to 100 parts that I don't need. Well, not 50 to 100, probably about 50 is a more better estimate. Not better, more better estimate. Uh, I can't think of the word I'm thinking of. It's just a better estimate that it's has a bunch of unneeded parts because all this station is going to be sent or uh, stationary so I'm not going to need any of the uh, reaction wheels well reaction wheels isn't a terrible thing but uh, any of the uh, I can probably get a little bit closer no too far bring it down to 4000 that's good enough I'll be able to get rid of the reaction wheels Reaction wheels, RCS, any of the engines that aren't needed anymore. Just stuff that's kind of useless for my purposes. I'll keep the tanks for those though, I believe, because that's... Well, with these vehicles that I'm going to be setting up, the tanks will technically be extra parts I don't need anymore, because this asteroid is probably going to have hundreds of thousands of units of fuel and with xenon I'm only gonna have to have like maybe a couple thousand but with liquid fuel and oxidizer it will be nice to have a mass amount I'm probably gonna start thrusting at about 50 seconds because the big difference between these two engines is one has 2,000 thrust and the other one has whoa why did it do that it has a very low amount of thrust and I only have less than 200 left I'll bring it down to like probably about 400 yeah just a bit under 400 and this one's gonna take another minute and a half which all in all isn't too bad I wish I started at a minute actually because it would be half and half for half before the node and half after the node most likely I'll just be a couple hundred like a hundred thousand feet higher than I was when in the orbit but we have the fuel to spare if we need to do corrections and such so it's not terrible Only 36 seconds This one is one. This is another thing from, uh, yeah, it's from, uh, I believe it's MKS, or it could be from the Logistics mod, but you can see everything that's being, uh, produced and consumed. It's actually, consumption never really shows up in which kind of sucks. Come on. There we go. Did I get an encounter? No, I did not. Ooh. It looks like I'm too high. Yeah, I'm too high. So we just gotta wait for that to come around. And since we have RCS, I can use that to help. I don't want to use too much of it though, because I need that RCS. Oh, I have tons actually. Kind of forgot about that. I thought I only put the smaller tanks on. Okay, so we're there. We'll just tap with the RCS to bring it down to a suitable height. There's the lowest we're going to go. But, 
you can see in here that we're we've only used actually we're using a point zero 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 one every half a second or something like that Ooh, I hope I didn't just glitch it because there is a glitch I got a while ago I don't know if it's still in the game as an issue but what will happen is the game will open multiple of these freaking supply or uh, logistics planes causing issues like right there which it isn't terrible but it is an annoyance so we're coming up on there and our supplies have only dropped 10 and we've already been out for six days so we have a fair amount of left we shouldn't have to worry about running out of supplies anytime soon but we are probably gonna want to yeah we're gonna have to uh, readjust this orbit well what is happening no 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 oh it's the RCS that was causing that so we're gonna want to fix that real quick we're gonna go to that focus view we're gonna want to end up on this side so I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that e might work yeah because we want to be on this side because last time we had to do a whole strange adjustment to the orbit which all in all it wasn't terrible but I would prefer not to have to do it because it was only like I don't know how much uh, Delta V maybe about 50 to 100 Delta V extra because of that fact but still, it's better to not have to do that. Even though, as I said before, we have more than enough Delta V to do that. Because the Space Y uh, thrusters, they're kind of overpowered. If I was playing an actual legitimate playthrough, I wouldn't use them very much. And I would only use like the on-par thrusters with the uh, stock. Because you can technically throw the largest one on and then thrust into the atmosphere with a lower uh, thrust ratio or not thrust ratio a lower highest amount of thrust with the SRB and then throw another SRB on after that with and put it a little bit lower left enough but still have a good thrust to weight ratio and then put another one on top of that and get to the point where you can just aim straight up Activate the first stage, then the second stage, and the third stage, and you are, depending on the angle, either heading to an orbit further away from Kerbin's orbit, or an orbit closer towards the sun, which makes it a lot easier to do connect with some of the planets either in the inner or outer solar system. But that's no fun. And slow down a little bit. A little bit more. No. Nope. Oh, that doesn't matter. It's a good thing about these really far orbital maneuvers. There's not really much of an effect from one minute to ten minutes. It can save you a lot of trouble in the, f in the end if you do these compared to trying to rectify everything inside the planet's sphere of influence. Like, we're pretty much right where we want to be. 41. It's at 45. So we're going to go ahead and get into... Ah... <laughs> uh... That sucks. I didn't do an autosave either. 
Hmm. Set this target. Okay, we're gonna try and rectify this real quick. Because we're only gonna need only a little bit of delta V to fix this in two orbits time. Okay, let's start this over. What we're going to do is try and find a suitable... Ooh, there's one. Come on! You just saw me hit you. And there we go. We're connected again. I'm just going to bring it back a little bit, because we want, no, okay, that's the best we're going to get, but it's going to be an estimated burn of pretty much nothing we screwed up that orbit terribly but with this 86 days oh okay we're gonna go ahead and pull up this Kerbal alarm clock to do this because if I try and do this it's gonna end up screwing up I just know that so we'll just go ahead and start warping we should be able to get there in actually very little time but here's a perfect example if you fuck up before reverting and all that if you have the extra stuff to do so just check in you might be able to rectify your mess up pretty easily because right now I could do this burn with RCS thrusters if need be but I have more than enough fuel to do this I really wish that didn't happen but it is what it is everybody fucks up plus it makes more fun if you screw up and you actually try and fix the issue instead of reverting right back to Kerbin and then restarting the flight completely to get it perfect because that's just I've done that many times and it takes sometimes if you're doing it a lot it takes the fun of the game like I've had many flights where they start cartwheeling on themselves and I'll wait for the cartwheel to come back around to the point where I can then thrust myself out of it which is hilarious at times it happened in one of my earlier caveman videos and it and for that flight I was able to just break out of it and then I had a few in uh, this uh, colony series Actually, a lot of the times it actually ends up happening because I'm so uh, back-end heavy or up-end heavy, never centralized, causing massive issues. But, in the end, it's... For shits and giggles, it's always just fun. Okay, we're going to go ahead and... No, turn on RCS. Why is my RCS working? What is going on? Okay, we're gonna bring that orbit down as far as you can with RCS. I really wish I included RCS in more of my crafts. It should be a necessity in my shipbuilding book, but I don't know why I just never decide to include it because I think reaction wheels are so great, but one tank of RCS can help you solve a lot of issues. And we're at the point where no more RCS is needed. So we'll come back around. Oh, sorry about that. I forgot to turn on Mousinator to lock me to the screen. Now hopefully, 
this doesn't screw up a ton of other stuff. We did end up using a month worth, or yeah, two to three months worth of supplies on that correction. With a more difficult life support system, I would uh, have just ended up reverting right back to Kerbin because with TAC life support, it's pretty rough because you can just suddenly, oh, you're now screwed. You don't have enough resources to get back to Kirby. You don't have enough resources to do anything. You're pretty much uh, resigned to the fate that you're going to lose Jebediah and all them and all that crap. Come on. Yay, it fell to the side I wanted it to. So I just got to keep bringing it up. And bring this in. Bring it a little bit down. Bring it back in back up and there we go 41,000 now I just need to get to that maneuver go ahead and turn on the RCS again it's at 90 990 which should be enough for those systems or for those little fuel hatches to be able to fly around and land If need be, I can just move them into position slowly. Would have been nice actually if I put the fuel hatches on the back end because then I could have disconnected one of them after the other one was connected and then try to get it away, but I don't know. This should be fine. And we're at one hour. And do do do. Don't want to have to deal with this again. So I'm not going to do what I did last time, where I thrusted way too frigging, or sp spent up time way too friggin' much, causing this whole fiasco. Where now I'm at 120 days, four months of them in flight. Jeb and Bill must smell like shit right now and feel like shit. We're just going to make sure. They get into the orbit they need, and I think it's actually the orbit that's not suited for this. I won't know until I get into the Spear of Influence, because it does look like it's the wrong way. No, it's it's fine. So we're going to wait till we get to the our periapsis, and then we're going to slow down. And with our second final stage, we should actually have enough fuel for this. No problem, actually, around Minimus. Around a heavy gravity planet, this is a completely different issue. One thing I actually haven't tried in all the amount of time I've played this game is try and do, uh... See how far I can get a Kerbal out of orbit with just the RCS pack on his spacesuit. Okay, so set his target. Now, we just need to see what we can do. So we just need to bring this up to a point that is higher doesn't look like it's going to work. So we're going to do a hypothetical orbit to save on fuel. Because we don't want to end up with... Why is it not working? It's like not moving at all. Why isn't it moving? Do I have to catch up on it? Oh, that's not doing it either. Yeah, something's wrong right here. So, two days worth of burns. What is going on? I think there's no way I can catch up with them. Okay, so that's going to be the orbit we do. Or the maneuver we do.
Now we just got to orbit around for two days. Which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And just to be safe, we're going to go ahead and add a maneuver of 10 minutes, a day and a half, or a day and five hours. Hopefully it doesn't mess up on me, because now that we're in the spiral influence, it might be a bit different. Another five hours left. We only used a little over 250 supplies, so they're still well set up for quite a while. Now, we're coming up on that maneuver. Delete on close. Now, this is a nice little mod. I don't know if there's something been removed from it because they added a. Uh... Oh, did I just alter it? I did. Why did I grab it? Shoot. There it is, there. I could probably easily just manually do this. I keep on forgetting to close Facebook when I record. Just annoying hearing those little dings from people messaging. And we're almost at the point where I should start thrusting. And there we go. Where are we at right now? 200 meters. Perfect. So what I'll do is I'll get close enough that I can then um, release those fuel hatches and then send them off. So we're going to want to aim for the we're going to want to bring this down to zero meters per second. It will start speeding up because the orbit is never 100% perfect. But that shouldn't really matter. Because we can just aim right back at it. Oh, but wait a minute. We're going to have to get really close. I just realized... I did not include any batteries on those little tiny ships. With that, they only have enough power for a couple seconds. Which is terrible. Um. Shoot. That actually sucks. Um. How much battery power do they have? 15. So I only have a couple of seconds worth of battery power for this. Oh, I might have... That's kind of actually infuriating. Um, this might not work out very well. Now swing back around. Shit might not go well. Worst case scenario, I could just bring two more little tugs with the required fuel hatches. I prefer not to, but it is what it is. Damn. I always seem to have these little mishaps, and that is blotting out the sun.
I can't even see in out. No, where is this power coming from? I don't remember where I put the battery at. I have to find that. Um. Oh shoot! Okay, we're gonna wait till we get into a point where the sun is shining on us. Okay. Um. We want that battery. Where's that battery at? And then into here. Okay, we're gonna quick save just to be safe. And uh, I'm not the brightest bulb, actually. Um. Okay, we're gonna want to end up targeting. Set as target. Okay. So what's gonna happen? is we're gonna want to oh wait is this ship backwards arm okay swing around we only got a little bit of time um okay we're gonna want to aim at the target and a little bit there okay okay we want RCS H like this is pretty much a blind maneuver because if this doesn't work out properly it will have to do it automatically when it crashes into it oh, I did not think this through I seem to have that problem a lot Turn off SAS. Doesn't affect it at all. There we go. So we got one down. Which means we now have access to a liquid fuel port. Expand tank. Bring it up to 10,000. So we can then transfer all this fuel out of it, out of these tanks, into here. Once we get oxidizer and liquid fuel. So now we need to go back to the other ship. Decouple you. Okay. Just start thrusting right back. And with these, the fuel hatch is only needed to create the actual, uh, fuel storage it's not actually needed to allow us to uh, get fuel out of it so we don't have to like dick around and fly ships around to connect it to this we can just have it connect to one hatch and then pull out the fuel to of any type to that ship so we're in good straits we got about 12 12 freaking electric charge so we have enough for about a minute or so of flight so I kinda overestimated the lack of electric charge so we shouldn't have to worry too much and now no 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 no
and there we go everything's connected now here's the slightly more difficult part we need to get Bill out here to and I didn't include any RCS on this so ooh 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 it's not terrible but it's gonna be a slightly more difficult and I didn't include any docking ports on this either I meant to board so now we just need to swing this around get in a good position and then we just got to connect it to the planet or the asteroid it doesn't have enough weight to be a planet okay so right there should be good I'm whoa 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 what are you doing what are you doing ship no 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 stop stop What is going on? Okay, what is... Okay, we're gonna have a bit of trouble. We're just gonna have to... Why aren't you connecting? Um, something's broken here. Decouple. I don't know if it's the friggin' port or the ship. It might be the ship. Which, if it is the ship, I'll have to end this video here and then get it to work again. Am I controlling from... Control from here. I don't know what's wrong. I might have damaged the port upon bumping up to it. Could be something completely different. I don't know. We'll just see if this connects one more time. If it doesn't, we'll have to send this back to the orbit of Kerbin. Or, I don't know. We'll have to figure something out. kind of frustrating actually like it's either there's too many things connected to the ast asteroid or there's something damaged with this port worst case scenario I'll just repaint it and try again which might fix it but I don't know we'll just require Jeb getting or uh, Bill getting out and repainting it shouldn't matter though come on yeah something's broken okay let's just break get him to EVA you paint as that and now we're gonna try and reconnect again see if that's the issue Xenon might just be broken. It might not be able to connect to it. If not, then I broke the port. <coughs> and yeah, I just broke the port, I guess. Is there any way I can save these guys? Actually, they're fine right now. 
they still have a ton of time left to reconnect um well i'm gonna end this video here i will have to go ahead and send a new version of this craft up with the xenon port on it and get it reconnected i don't know if i'm gonna do that for the next video or i'm just gonna get this connected and then work on uh the next video after i do so because we've already went through that floyd numbness but it didn't want to work but, yeah, I'm going to end this video here. I uh, thank you for watching. My name has been Keith Loki. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike and then a comment on why you dislike the video. I'd love to hear back from people that don't like my videos. And subscribe if you want to see more videos when they get released. You guys have a good night.